great day. You sing with us. We have Elijah back today, back from college. He passed all his classes. We're proud of him. Let's sing and worship together today. We worship the God who was. We worship the God who is. We worship the God who evermore will be. He opened the prison doors. He parted the raging sea. My God, he holds the victory. There's joy in the house of the Lord. There's joy in the house of the Lord today. And we won't be quiet. We'll shout out your praise. There's joy in the house of the Lord. Our God is surely in this place. And we won't be quiet. We shout out your praise. We shout out your praise. We sing to the God who heals. We sing to the God who saves. We sing to the God who always makes a way. Cause he hung up on that cross, then he rose up from that grave. My God's still rolling stones away. There's joy in the house of the Lord. There's joy in the house of the Lord today. And we won't be quiet. We'll shout out your praise. There's joy in the house of the Lord. Our God is surely in this place. And we won't be quiet. We shout out your praise. Cause we were the beggars, now we're royalty. We were the prisoners, now we're running free. We are forgiven, accepted, redeemed by his grace. Let the house of the Lord sing praise. Cause we were the beggars, now we're royalty. We were the prisoners, now we're running free. We are forgiven, accepted, redeemed by His grace. Let the house of the Lord sing praise. And we won't be quiet. We shout out your praise. There's joy in the house of the Lord. Our God is surely in this place. And we won't be quiet. We shout out your praise. There's joy in the house of the Lord. There's joy in the house of the Lord today. And we won't be quiet. We shout out your praise. There's joy in the house of the Lord. Our God is surely in this place. And we won't be quiet. We shout out your praise. Amen. Amen and amen. Joyful, joyful. We adore thee. Joyful, joyful.
pray with me. Lord Jesus, we come to you right now and we worship you in joy. We rejoice in the Lord always. And again, I say rejoice. We love you because you first loved us. We are so grateful for our salvation to be set free from our sins. Thankful that you died on the cross for us, God. We're so grateful that we get to live the abundant life here on the earth, Lord, and that we have the hope of heaven. And God, that you have just given us a, a life to live, a mission trip to work out, Lord. And so I pray that we would just have our eyes on you, the author and the perfecter of our faith, that we'd keep our eyes on that finish, uh, finish line, Lord, and that we would just run the race of life. We pray that we would sense the presence of your Holy Spirit, that we would come to understand his work uh, individually in our lives and his presence with us this morning. We pray that he would not be grieved or quenched in any way, God, that we would just bring honor and glory to your name as we worship together, as we study your word, as we listen to you speak. Thank you, God, for what you're going to do. In your name I pray. Amen. It's good to see you this morning. Thank you for coming. I guess you've noticed the uh, difference in uh, decor. And uh, we're geared up for vacation uh, Bible school starting uh, tomorrow evening. How, isn't this incredible what our uh, group has put together? Yeah, will you thank them for that? Everywhere you go that uh, the kids are going to be this week, you'll find uh, elaborate and wonderful uh, decorations. I hope that you've been, we've been praying for quite a while now, and, and the day is here. I hope that you've been uh, urgently uh, praying and asking the Lord to bless our week like it's never been blessed before. We'd love to see children come to know Jesus as their Savior and for them to advance in their spiritual development. So looking uh, forward to that. So you be sure and be constantly uh, praying uh, for this event and invite and invite, invite, invite. Did I say invite? This today, this afternoon. Now's the time to invite uh, people that you know, their children, to come and be a part of this uh, great week together. And then men, I want to mention to you, uh, here in a couple of weeks, it's going to be Father's Day, and we're going to all eat breakfast together and study the Word together, so you be sure and come at 945 and meet us over at the gym, and we'll enjoy that fellowship together. Uh, so good to have guests with us today. Uh, we have a little spot on the back of our worship guide. We'd love to have your mailing address, your email address, so we can let you know about future events. You can also, if you're a guest, text GUEST to 903-296-3135. Uh, we're going to stand together and greet each other and greet our guests. Let's do that right now.
Good morning. Good morning. I think I'm on the right one. <laughs> All right. Hey, good morning. They did excellent, didn't they? We got more of that energy coming up all week. You know, the decorating team, everybody, this, this has been great. And uh, as you can see, we wanted you guys to be immersed in this with us. And we want you to be immersed in prayer with us this week. And um, so I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to pray specifically for Vacation Bible School right now. So if you join with me, Lord God, we just thank you and we praise you. Lord, for months we've been thinking about this week so that we can be an outreach to our community and to our kids so that they can draw closer in a friendship with you, Lord. And um, these kids have been practicing for, for months. Our leaders have been rehearsing for months. And all the preparations lead up to this week, Lord God, so that we can serve you to our community so that we can be light and salt to those that don't know you. So God, let the hearts that are coming this week be prepared to be receptive to your message, God. Let the um, energy and excitement for every one of our leaders to, to last throughout the week because it's going to be long days, God, and we just know that you are a sustainer and that you are going to provide that energy for us. So, God, we just thank you and we praise you. But, Lord, God, let you be glorified most of all out of anything going on this week and that the name of Jesus be proclaimed off of every lip that comes walking through these doors. So, God, we just thank you and we praise you for everything that you're doing in our lives, and it's in Jesus' name we pray. Amen. answers prayers we can take anything anything to him sweet hour of prayer sweet hour of prayer sweet
know that we fight our battles on our knees. If there's something you need from the Lord, just go to Him and ask Him. When all I see is the battle, you see my victory. When all I see is a mountain, you see a mountain. And as I walk through the shadow, your love surrounds me. There's nothing to fear now, for I am safe. There's nothing impossible for you. When all I see are the ashes, you see the beauty. When all I see is a cross, God, you see the empty tomb. So when Please bow with me. Oh, dear Heavenly Father, we thank you for this day. We thank you for the opportunity to come into your house and worship. Thank you, God, for all the talents in which that you have given each and every one of us. Thank you for the example that our choir gives to us each and every week. Thank you, Lord, for those that volunteer and do things that we may not see, but without them, they wouldn't be concluded. 
and with all these things we do them to satisfy you and may we worship you each and every day be with us as we go through the week give brother mike the words that will reach out and touch us and prepare us to take our stand against the devil's schemes father i thank you for the work that each and every one of these people that have done that have volunteered for the vacation bible school may you be with them may you give them the energy the patience the courage to go forward to make it throughout the whole week may they bring a word in which that it touches the hearts of some of these young children may they look into you and may they want you to be a part of their life and may they want to be a part of your kingdom take this money that we take with our tithings and we give unto you may you use it to further your kingdom and to broaden the horizons of the world for it's in your son Jesus name I pray amen Wow, isn't that amazing that God would give us four flute players? All right, fantastic. Would you thank them again for doing that for us, please? Man, we've just been on, a, we've been riding uh, on the Spirit for quite a while. Started with Easter, what a wonderful day we had together. Then the next Sunday we had uh, Ken Freeman with us. Wonderful week, 92 uh, people accepted Jesus Christ, their personal Savior, baptized, baptized, baptized. Then the Sunday after that, um, we have an awesome service where I can't remember, we did, I think we baptized seven that morning. Then we had the wonderful testimonies, and we were starting this series, Taking Your Stand Against the Devil's Scheme, because the Lord had told me, 
that we're going to uh, have a lot of new believers and we need to know how to fight the devil. Well, I couldn't even get through the first point because we just basically ran out of time, if you remember, on that Sunday. So we moved on to the next Sunday, did the first sermon, then there was the second sermon, and then the third sermon. And as I was kind of preparing the third sermon, sermon it dawned on me the next Sunday was going to be Mother's Day and I thought oh man I got to do something special for the mamas so I switched gears we had Mother's Day then we recognized the graduates and then I took off last Sunday y'all had a good time on the picnic didn't you right yeah all right so you probably completely forgot that we hadn't finished this series but we are finishing it today Take your stand against the devil's scheme. It's the most important sermon of the entire series. It's the most important sermon that I could ever preach. If you could ever get it, you would really, really see incredible things that God does. If I would get it like I should, I would see the incredible things that God does. Let's review what we've learned We've learned that we need to know that we have an enemy named Satan or Lucifer, the devil, and that he wants to steal the seed of the Word of God. He wants to distract you from the mission. He wants to get you off in the wrong direction, and he is real. But God gives us six pieces of armor that we can put on in order to fight the devil and his schemes the first one is the belt of truth it's what holds everything together the basically we need to know the truth and we need to live the truth then we learned about the breastplate of righteousness it's the righteousness of Jesus not the righteousness of you, of you so you don't have to be concerned and that righteousness covers our hearts and then we were to be fitted with the shoes of peace God gives us peace in every circumstance. I heard Karen's cousin preach his 40-year-old daughter's funeral yesterday, and you could see that he had peace. You can't explain something like that, especially to an unbeliever. But peace comes in the strangest moments. I told you about the wreck that we had with our suburban and travel trailer and at the moment that we were flipping over I had peace it's nuts I just doesn't even just doesn't even make sense but that is the weapon that God has given us in order to fight the enemy then there's the helmet of salvation it's the basic fact that you don't have to worry about if you're saved or not okay you can have the assurance of your salvation and it protects your head it protects your thinking your mind your will your emotions and then there is the last two weapons that we talked about in which they're more uh, offensive instead of defensive there's the shield of faith where you fight off those fiery darts of Satan I'm gonna tell you what just when you uh, least expect it he's gonna shoot a dart at you and you need to have faith We need to live by faith. We need to walk by faith, not by sight. And then there is the sword of the Spirit, which is the Word of God. Study it. Meditate on it. Love it. Memorize it. Live by it. Don't try to change it and adjust it to what you think. You let the Word speak to you, and you adjust your thinking to what the Word says. So now, we are dressed for battle. So the question is, what's our job? And we're going to read it in our passage today. Let's stand together. Ephesians 6, starting with verse 17. Take the helmet of salvation and the sword of the Spirit, which is the Word of God, and pray in the Spirit on earth all occasions with all kinds of prayers and requests with this in mind be alert always keep on praying for all the Lord's people pray also for me that whenever I speak 
Words may be given me so that I will fearlessly make known the mystery of the gospel, for which I am an ambassador in chains. Pray that I may declare it fearlessly as I should. So our job is to pray in the Spirit. Another text I want you to look at is Romans 8, verse 26 and 27. It says, In the same way the Spirit helps us in our weakness, we do not know what we ought to pray for, but the Spirit himself intercedes for us through wordless groans. And he who searches our hearts knows the mind of the Spirit because the Spirit intercedes for God's people in accordance with the will of God. Man, there's so much here. Let's pray together. Lord Jesus, your word is already anointed. We pray that uh, you with the Holy Spirit, God, would communicate to each one of us how we can advance to the next level in our prayer life. God, I pray that you would help us to see how important it is to be a person of prayer and to live in the power of the Holy Spirit. I know that you're going to talk to us now, and I know that you're going to help us to adjust our thinking the way that we live. And God, that we're going to be blessed for it. Thank you for hearing my prayer. In your name I pray. Amen. Thank you. You may be seated. This scripture says that prayer is our greatest privilege. It is greater than anything spiritual that any person can do. It is greater than preaching. It is greater than teaching. And the other side of the coin is prayer is probably our greatest failure and that is so unfortunate because prayer is our answer to indifference it's our answer to ignorance Jude 120 says but you dear friends by building yourselves up in your most holy faith and praying in the Holy Spirit prayer in the Holy Spirit is all that the church can depend on. We cannot depend on our resources. We can't depend on our facilities. We can't depend on our programs and ministries. Praying in the Spirit overcomes our limitations and our weaknesses. 2 Corinthians 12, 9 says... But he said to me, my grace is sufficient for you, for my power is made perfect in weakness. Therefore, I will boast all the more gladly about my weaknesses, so that Christ's power may rest on me. You see, God allows us to have weaknesses or to be weak so that we will depend on him. And it's when we depend on the Lord that we become stronger. Did you know that yesterday, June 1st, 2024, our oldest member, Brenda Bowden, had a birthday? She was 101 years old. I went to see Ms. Bowden yesterday. Uh, she shared a piece of Italian cream cake with me that someone had brought by. She was uh, eating her lunch of, of uh, chicken strips and gravy and... Uh, mashed potatoes and green beans that was about the only healthy thing she was eating so so much for that <laughs> but anyway any conversation that you have with Ms. Bowden she is going to tell you that she doesn't know why the Lord has allowed her to live this long and she's going to tell you that the only way that she lives is to depend on the Lord and that it is the Lord that carries her and helps her. Her health has been failing in the last couple of years. Her mind is just failing just a little bit, repeats a little bit. It's not real bad. But anyway, she's, she's obviously at 101 going down, finally, you know. She's been real spry all through her 90s. But anyway, you know how it is, you know. Some of us have got the t-shirt, you know, when the, when the health fails and things don't go the way we're used to them going. We've got to adjust. 
And the only way that Ms. Bowden has adjusted is by depending on the Lord. It is the Holy Spirit that helps us in our weakness. God wants to deliver us from self-sufficiency. You do not have to depend on yourself. You don't have to pull your bootstraps up and, and, and all of those sayings that we have, you know, like that. We are partners with God in what he is doing in this world, and it's the devil who wants us to think that we are indispensable. Either he will use you, he will use me, or he'll use somebody else. But he'll find a willing vessel, and he's created plenty of them out there. The Holy Spirit wants to speak through our minds. He wants to use our eyes. He wants to use our intellect and our gifts and our talents to his glory. So I believe the first thing that I want you to consider for your thinking this morning is that spirit-led prayer is the only way that we will be encouraged to pray. Look at verses 5 through 8 in our text that we read earlier. Those who live according to the flesh have their minds set on what the flesh desires. But those who live in accordance with the Spirit have their minds set on what the Spirit desires. The mind governed by the flesh is death, but the mind governed by the Spirit is life. Now, which one do you want? You want death, you want life. And peace, by the way, life and peace. The mind governed by the flesh is hostile to God. It does not submit to God's law, nor can it do so. Those who are in the realm of the flesh cannot please God. It's just like another passage that I've memorized. Apart from uh, Jesus, I can do nothing. If, if you're in the realm of the flesh, you cannot, underline the word cannot, please God. The flesh has no desire to pray. It is apathetic to prayer. Right? You know that. It is the Spirit of God who is alive and active in us. And He's the one that will lead us to want to pray. When we're in the flesh, we are apathetic. The Holy Spirit energizes prayer. Romans 8.15 says, The spirit you receive does not make you slaves so that you live in fear again. Rather, the spirit you receive brought about your adoption to sonship, and by him we cry, Abba, Father. The translators had a hard time uh, translating this scripture here, but this word Abba is a diminutive that a baby would speak. So it's the actual birth cry of a new believer. When the Holy Spirit comes in us, we are adopted into the family of God, and Jesus taught us when we prayed to start our prayers, Our Father. Galatians 4, 5 says, To redeem those under the law that we might receive adoption to sonship. When the Holy Spirit is really set free in our life, we will have the prayer life of Jesus. Let me say that again. When the Holy Spirit is set free in our life, we will have the prayer life of Jesus. What do you think about that? I kind of need the prayer life of Jesus. Do you? Spirit-led prayer gives enlightenment. Verse 26 in Romans 8 says, In the same way the Spirit helps us in our weakness, we do not know what we ought to pray for, but the Spirit himself intercedes for us through wordless groans. That's another difficult passage to translate into English. It's saying we don't know what to pray. It's the Holy Spirit that tells us what to put on our prayer list. I don't know about you, but, you know, it can be a bit overwhelming sometimes on figuring out what to pray for or what to pray about. If someone who is spirit-led 
says they are praying for me. What a privilege. I have lived off the prayers. So many people I can think of right now that are already in glory, but other people that are living today who have me on their prayer list, and they are spirit-led. The Holy Spirit leads them what to pray and how to pray for me. You've got people like that in your life too. What a privilege it is. And in order for our prayers to be effective, we have to be selective. Only put on your prayer list what the Holy Spirit tells you to put on your prayer list. The Holy Spirit will lead your prayer. And He can make our selective prayer effective. Look at Romans 8, 27. It says, And He who searches our hearts knows the mind of the Spirit because the Spirit intercedes for God's people in accordance with the will of God. What is that saying? The Holy Spirit takes our prayers and transforms them according to God's will. Do you think that it ever crossed my mind the day that I bought a lot on Lake Gilmer that it would be over two years later and we'd still be trying to bring a house on that lot? And it's been quite the topic of conversation, both in my face and behind my back, I'm sure. <laughs> but I know that every time we visit, you know, the question is, how's the house coming? What stage are you on? Or, you know, whatever, whatever it is. I hope that you have noticed that Amy and I are not too worried about it. For some reason, it's a part of God's plan. I don't know why. I can't answer it, you know. I, I try. I guess when I get to heaven, I'll, I'll know, you know. I don't know. But we're okay with it because it must be a part of God's plan because I've done everything humanly possible and we have prayed about it urgently and that's all I can do. But you know what? God's plans are best. That's all I want in my life is His plan. That's all I want. I don't want anything else. It's kind of like Garth Brooks' song. Remember, thank God for unanswered prayers. How many prayers have we prayed that we think back now and go, Oh, Lord, I'm glad you didn't answer that one. Okay? Let's want what God wants. And then, Spirit-led praying gives us life. Look at verses 10 and 11 in Romans 8. But if Christ is in you, then even though your body is subject to death because of sin, the Spirit gives life because of righteousness. And if the Spirit of Him who raised Jesus from the dead is living in you, He who raised Christ from the dead will also give life to your mortal bodies because of His Spirit who lives in you. It takes energy to pray. And that's why Jesus said to those sleepy disciples in the garden, the spirit is willing, but the flesh is weak. There is always sufficient power to do what God calls us to do. And if Jesus says pray and we sleep instead, we are giving in to the devil. Can I say that again? If Jesus says to pray and we sleep, Instead, we are giving in to the devil. Because spirit-led praying expresses our prayers. Look at verse 26 in Romans 8. It says, In the same way the Spirit helps us in our weakness, we do not know what we ought to pray for. I don't know what to pray for. But the Spirit himself intercedes for us through wordless groans. I mean, these are groans that are so deep that words cannot even express them. They're sighs. Now, I mean, if you've been married long enough, you know your spouse's sigh and what it means, I'm sure, okay? 
God knows our sighs too. He knows our groans. And so this is how we get um, our prayers to the Lord. We don't know how to say it. We don't know what to pray. So the Holy Spirit expresses it for us. Hey, isn't that wonderful? Isn't that a great deal? You don't have to say a bunch of these and thous and come up with all these little formulas and everything. They're all helpful and all that like that. Uh, when you pray and you pray from your heart, if you can't get the right words, and by the way, there's way many too, too many people in First Baptist Church that are afraid to pray out loud because you're afraid you're going to pray something wrong. There are no wrong prayers. The Holy Spirit takes care of it right here. If you pray something that's supposedly wrong, the Holy Spirit's going to take it and he's going to groan it to the Lord and the Lord's going to hear the desire of your heart. Are you with me? All right, I want to hear some more of you praying out loud. I, always, I don't know who to call on sometimes, you know. I don't want anybody to go, oh, no, I don't want to pray, you know. <laughs> Spirit-led prayer leads us to persevere. The devil doesn't want you to pray. But it says in our passage that prayer is our warfare. Romans 8.31 says, What then shall we say in response to these things? If God is for us, who can be against us? When we go to God in prayer, the devil lets loose the artillery of hell. And the devil tries to get us to serve God without prayer. He wants you to witness without praying. He wants you to attend church without praying. He wants you to study the Bible without praying. But there is no substitute for prayer. No enthusiasm, no eloquence, no energy. I've even had people leave the church because they didn't want to pray. Think about that for a minute. I mean, I'm thinking, Amy's over here nodding her head, and I'm thinking about a couple of families that left our previous church because we wanted to pray. Does that disconnect with you? It sure disconnects with this passage right here. The Word says we wrestle not with flesh and blood, okay? So our argument's not with people, right? There's no ever anything that's going on, any tension, any conflict, any strife. It's not people. We wrestle with the devil and his demons. And do you know what the wrestle is? It's prayer. Prayer is wrestle. The battle is prayer. Ephesians 6.18 says, And pray in the Spirit on all occasions with all kinds of prayers and requests. With this in mind, be alert and always keep on praying for all the Lord's people. It's only prayer in the Holy Spirit that can overcome the influence of the devil. I could have said that at the beginning and sent you home 25 minutes ago. Only prayer in the Holy Spirit can overcome the influence of the devil. We must pray in the Spirit. To pray in the Spirit, we must be filled with the Spirit. To be filled with the Spirit, we must be saved. To be saved, we must call on the name of the Lord because the Bible says whoever calls upon the name of the Lord will be saved. So the first question is, have you done that? Have you truly called upon the Lord? If you haven't, you have opportunity right now to do just that. If you have called upon the name of the Lord and you are saved, then I want to know, are you filled with the Holy Spirit? And are you praying in the Spirit? If not, today's the day to begin. Christianity is always about the present. It's always about moving to the future. No regrets about the past. You can't do anything about the past. We leave the past and press to the future. Who wants to join me in praying in the Spirit? You want to do it? Yeah, hallelujah, let's do it. 
can you imagine the miracles that God will do that only he could get credit for when First Baptist Gilmer is a praying in the Holy Spirit church. Hallelujah. Are you with me? When, when that's all that matters to us. Okay. I see some people signing up. Let's sign up. Let's be people of prayer, okay? Pray with me, Lord Jesus. Thank you, God. Oh, I just sense your Holy Spirit doing and moving and working and doing so many things in us. God, I pray that we would truly be people of prayer, that I would be a pastor that prays, that Amy would be a worship leader that prays, Lord, that our deacons would be men of prayer, our Bible teachers, and this congregation, Lord, that we would understand that there's nothing more important than spirit-led praying. And so, God, I cry out to you right now and any person that does not know you, Savior, I pray that the enemy would not have opportunity to snatch the seed of the Word of God today. But, Lord, those fiery darts that he's sending that will be able to put up the shield of faith and that any person in this room that's listening to me right now would know that whoever calls upon the name of the Lord will be saved. And for those of us who have already done that, may we be spirit-led. May we be led by your Holy Spirit and, and approach our relationship with you and our relationship with others in humility, God. And as we humble before you, God, you will take every weakness that we have and you will bring good out of it, God. And you will do miracles, beautiful miracles that only you get credit for. Thank you, God, for hearing my prayer right now. And thank you for the opportunity, Lord Jesus, that we have right now to worship you and to let your Holy Spirit do his thing. In your name I pray. Amen. Let's stand together and let's worship right now. We invite you to come for membership, for baptism. Come pray with the staff member. Come to this altar and pray. However the Holy Spirit leads, we are ready to receive you right now. Take a Great day, hadn't it? Would you give the Lord praise right now? Yes. <laughs>